I think that my schizophrenic neighbor was sold to a guy from another country to be married to so that that guy could get citizenship in the United States. Am I the jerk for doing what I had to do when I discovered all of this and had to take matters into my own hands? Here's what happened. This is in Oakland, California in the East San Francisco Bay Area. I have a next door neighbor who moved into the apartment next door to mine in June of 2021 and has been a major nuisance. She is schizophrenic and is constantly screaming banging, smoking, loitering around the complex, playing her music and singing loudly or screaming and talking in no one. She looks very unkempt constantly and mentally unwell based on her hygiene. I'm definitely empathetic to those with mental illnesses but have had to make a couple of reports to our property manager asking if any action can be taken against her because she lives next door and it's made the living situation tense for me and my partner and somewhat difficult to focus while working from home. Every time he said that they will talk to her and her husband, and the situation gets very, very marginally better for a small interval, but then goes back to just being just as bad very swiftly. So we've kind of given up on it and learned to live with it. Here's the thing with the husband. We were confused what husband the property manager was even referring to because when they first moved in, we saw the dude maybe once, but then never again, at least for months. Eventually, I started to notice a guy that would come around maybe once every week or two, get packages, and then be gone almost as soon as he arrived. Whenever he was there, the woman was usually quiet and not being disruptive as usual. I saw this guy's name once or twice on packages and a very close friend and I thought something might definitely be fishy with the situation, so we did some digging on the internet and here's the deal. He was born in India and according to Facebook, studied engineering at a couple of colleges there. Then most recently, studied at a university in San Jose, California. So at some point, he immigrated to the United States from India. He's listed as single on Facebook and there is no trace of the so-called wife anywhere on his socials. Strangely, a people search showed that he lived in Sunnyvale near San Jose, but the apartment where the woman lives next to us is in Oakland, California, about a 60 minute drive north. I recently read a comment on a post about family secrets in which someone mentioned that their uncle sold their schizophrenic aunt, his daughter, to someone outside the country so that they could get citizenship and everything kind of clicked for me. Their living space is very sparse and empty when I get glances inside and it seems almost like this man might just be storing her there but otherwise living, working, and probably dating elsewhere. If my suspicions are correct, it makes me wonder about the legality and the morality, of course, of a clearly mentally unsound individual having been potentially goaded or somehow forced and sold into a marriage like this for the sake of someone else's citizenship. I can't really think of many other scenarios this could be unless I'm missing something. I'm not sure if and or how I should or would go about reporting this anonymously in a way that would prevent retaliation. Do any of you fine folk have any other thoughts or opinions on the matter of if and or whether I should do anything? Just to clear some things up because I'm seeing a couple of misunderstandings about the situation and even some people calling me a Karen. If nothing bad is going on, I'm not going to get a vulnerable person kicked out of their home. I've learned to live with the neighbor's shenanigans at this point, and while it is annoying, they're the least of my worries as to my reason for posting this. I'm worried about the potential deterioration of her mental health and isolation and the current state of her stark and bare living situation that she's in. If she's not being properly cared for, she is not mentally stable enough to be independent or self-caring from what I've seen over the past six to seven months. I know some people with schizophrenia can manage it with therapy and medication and live largely uninterrupted lives. That is not this individual. I'm talking like alone all day, sleeping on what looks like a twin mattress in the living room, screaming and crying at the bathroom mirror on the other side of the wall about killing and being alone and unloved or random vitriolic insults at nothing and no one. If she is better off being treated by mental health care professionals, then anyone I decide to potentially report this to can decide what's best for her situation better than I can. However, I am highly doubtful that someone in the mental health situation I described above is better off living alone in a small apartment with no job and no one to talk to, smoking all day, and I think based on whiskey bottles that have been smashed from the balcony into the parking lot, drinking all day, while someone who could be taking advantage of her, as far as I know, is there two to three times a month and taking advantage of her for citizenship or anything else. I am as progressive as they come, and the immigration aspect of this in and of itself is not my concern in the slightest. My concern 
is if there is what amounts to trafficking, neglect, etc., happening. So there is an update. I was correct in my assessment and this sad story appears to have resolved itself. Even though this is unfortunately a terrible situation all around, I can't help feeling a bit vindicated after the rough treatment I received from a number of commenters on the original post, as well as the jerk that I had to block who decided to post three comments calling me an awful Karen who needs to mind their own business and even DM me to continue her harassing me. Last night, I received word from the property manager that my next door neighbor would be moving out at the end of the month. The manager told me that this neighbor's husband was from India, as I'd found out online, knew she was schizophrenic and unstable when he married her, as I thought, and did it entirely for the green card, as I presumed, and regularly got violently sloshed and injured her as I regularly heard through the walls. They had a big, violent fight. Think a domestic situation so loud it could be heard across the street. That happened a couple of weeks ago and the husband has not been back since. He is annulling their marriage, will stop paying their rent, and is moving back to India because he was not in the United States long enough to become a citizen. The husband was barely ever home here with her and when he was gone, her unstable behavior escalated and escalated progressively to the point where a little over a month ago, the neighbor with schizophrenia was scream crying and wailed in the park from midnight onward for two hours and then came back to her apartment, proceeded to make full on atomic levels of noise in the way of banging, slamming and making the smoke alarm go off multiple times all at 2am until her downstairs neighbors came up angry and yelled at her that she needed to be quiet. Our schizophrenic neighbor proceeded to call her the N word, something the property manager told me she has done before to children at the park across from our apartment complex and ramble on nonsensically. I randomly heard her mention white boy Leonardo DiCaprio at some point. While it shouldn't be necessary to include, since it's never okay to call someone a slur. For context, the neighbor is white, but her downstairs neighbor and our property manager are black and the kids in the park are black. The property manager was there for that whole fight and tried to dispel it, telling the downstairs neighbor that our next door neighbor can't help it, it's not her talking, etc. until everyone quieted down and settled in. The thing is, the property manager is right. This woman can't control her behavior or what she says. She clearly needs better care for her illness and she isn't getting it while shut up in that apartment alone, living self-destructively as someone's ticket to get a green card. She needs to be back where she has access to her medication and a support network for this mental illness. The property manager mentioned that the neighbor is from Georgia and left her meds there. I hope that she gets the help that she needs, but I'd be lying if I said I'm not just relieved to hear that she will not be here injecting strenuous disturbances and anxiety into my partners and my daily lives. Maybe this makes me atrocious for feeling that way, but we have a life to live ourselves and not enough resources to move in this economy. In any case, I wanted to give this update after a number of self-righteous comments on my previous post had me doubting that pursuing anything was the right thing to do. The people who told me that I was being xenophobic slash nosy or intrusive for my assessment that someone who happens to be an immigrant might be, correction, was taking advantage of and injuring a vulnerable, mentally ill individual kind of makes me sick in in hindsight. I didn't end up reaching out to Homeland Security or any mental health or adultive protective services because the commenters saying that I was being xenophobic got to me and the process for getting in contact with adult protective services in Oakland was Byzantine and seemed underfunded. What a surprise. Regardless, both of these individuals are now moving on from their toxic relationship. So was I the jerk for doing what I did? This is a very serious thing that probably happens more often than most people think it does. I wouldn't be surprised to learn if there's a whole black market that services these type of things at the expense of the person who was the neighbor in the situation. It's crazy to me that people think that he was so nosy or so intrusive when in reality, he probably saved this neighbor from things getting even worse because he had some sort of idea of what was going on as opposed to just minding his own business and had nothing to do with it at all. I mean, he already says that she looked like she was in distress, that she was uncared for and that she was unwell. It's not exactly like he was breaking into her house or 
or was going way above and beyond in terms of intrusion, probably the most intrusive thing he did was looking at the name on the package and then trying to find more information from there. But in a situation like this where people think that he did too much, there's a whole other side of the coin where what if something actually happened where this lady died and then people would say, why didn't anyone do anything? Why didn't anyone notice what was going on and do something to help her? This lady sounded like she was very vulnerable and alone. If the original poster didn't read that thing about how someone confessed that their cousin was sold into this whole green card scheme, then he might not have noticed what was going on with his own neighbor. I don't think that that's the conclusion most people would come to naturally if they didn't hear about a situation like this happening before. But if you were in this situation, what do you think you would have thought was going on and what would you do? Am I the jerk for divorcing my wife because she is always late? I'm a 34 year old man and my wife is 29 years old. We've been married for five years. Since we started dating, she has always taken her sweet time in doing everything, getting dressed, doing her makeup, eating, whatever it is, she takes forever. I'm generally a patient person, but I get extremely anxious when I'm late for something with a scheduled starting time. Alone, I've never been late for anything. With her in tow, I am late for everything. The most frustrating thing about this is that she seemingly has no ability to comprehend that she's making people wait. If I even suggest that she move a little faster, she gets really defensive. A few years ago, one of her best friends dumped her because she was tired of her chronic lateness. Last night, we went out to see a movie. Getting to the mall before the movie started was a battle itself, but miraculously, with the prospect of doing some shopping before it, she was able to gather her necessary belongings and get there with time to spare. She started shopping while I more or less followed her until it was about time to get to the theater. When I told her this, she was talking to a sales clerk about the clothes that she wanted to buy and she told me to hang on for a sec. As usual, hang on meant I have absolutely no concern about your needs because I am doing my own thing right now and anything other than what I want to do is out of the question. I waited around for a couple more minutes until she started taking jeans off the shelves to try new combinations. The previews had already started. I told her again and she said we can just skip the previews. At this point, I just walked away, which naturally she didn't notice. I turned off my phone and enjoyed the movie myself. As a side note, I missed the first few minutes of it waiting for her standing in line and making my way to the theater. On my way out of the theater, I saw her on a bench in the lobby beside herself because I ditched her. I honestly didn't feel bad at all and I told her that I'd do it again. This made her more upset and finally we had an awkward, quiet drive home. Apparently, she was actually looking forward to the movie too. I felt it was supposed to be tough love, but she seems really hurt. But before you decide jerk or not a jerk, there is an update. Two months later, this is what happened. I am divorcing my wife because she has been late for 90% of everything we have ever done together. Everyone we know is shocked and confused, but I don't care. No, I am not having an affair. No, I am not having a midlife crisis. No, I am not looking for a younger woman. No, I'm not hiding anything. My wife and I have been together for 12 years. During this time, she has not made even the slightest amount of effort to be on time for anything we did. When we were dating, the average wait times were 15 minutes to an hour for her to finally show up. I waited because I loved her. After marriage, she somehow got worse. And after childbirth, she got even worse. She used to blame circumstances for her being late every time, but now she just blames our son. I put up with it because I loved her. Example number one, we're currently looking at preschools. We're 15 to 30 minutes late for each meeting because the thing we need most in our lives is for the teacher to believe our son is chronically going to be late for school. It's always something with her. Example number two, I wanted to see a movie in theaters a while ago. She wanted to come too. I had to leave her in a clothing shop because I was going to miss the start of the movie. Of course, she was livid. Example number three. A few months ago, we went to see a concert of a group she likes. We were an hour early because, of course, it was something that she wanted to do. I am so sick and tired of it. Dinner reservations are always a toss-up because restaurants in our area have no chill and will cancel your reservation if you're a minute late. Growing increasingly anxious as she stares at her stupid phone and trying to ask her in the nicest way possible to hurry up is a horrible feeling, especially since she will flip her lid the second that I 
I'd try and tell her we're going to be late. Meeting up with friends, going to a children's event with our son. For Pete's sake, even trying to take a walk is always an ordeal of trying to get her to put down the darn phone and get ready so I don't have to stand there like an idiot. I think my boiling point was last week when I stood there at the entrance of our house for 20 minutes with our son as he grew increasingly impatient and then seeing that she had abruptly decided to start vacuuming the house. I'm getting spammed with calls from mutual friends and family. She went and told everyone that we're getting divorced. Everyone wants to talk me out of it. I just broke after years and years of patience. I have no regrets. Am I the jerk? I can absolutely relate to knowing people that even when you try and say the thing in the nicest way to them, when it's their fault, they think it's okay to blow up at you when you're not the one that in this case is making them late. It's some weird, sick power dynamic that some people seem to have in their own personal relationships where one person is afraid of saying anything about the other person's behavior. And that happens in all sorts of situations. Being around someone like that that you're trying not to upset is like walking on eggshells constantly. Sometimes people have relationships like this with their parents, which eventually you can get away from. But when you end up being married to a person like this, that's got to be awful constantly tiptoeing around even though it's causing you this much distress. I mean, when you really boil everything down, it sounds like this guy did communicate what was going on and why it bothered him and because she felt it wasn't important, she's disregarding his feelings about the situation, even though those feelings are very valid. She probably thinks something along the lines of, how could you possibly be stressed out or anxious because I'm late? Why does it matter to you? But it does matter. It obviously matters because he said it matters. If it didn't matter, he wouldn't say it mattered. I'm sure at least one of you guys know somebody out there like this. And if so, let me know down below in the comments. Or if you have a full on story to tell, you can submit it via the bottom link of the description to be featured in a future episode. If it's a great story. So do you think this guy is way too extreme for divorcing his wife of five years and being with her for 12 years because she's always late? Or do you think that's completely justified? Jerk or not a jerk and why? I was gifted a laser tattoo removal by my mother on my husband, who's 43 years old, and I, 31, have been married for three years together for six. Obviously, there is an age gap between my husband and I, which has never been an issue for us. My mother-in-law, however, has always greatly disapproved and likes to talk to me like I am a rebellious teenager instead of her son's life partner. A big issue for her is the fact that I have tattoos. I love all my tattoos. They are well done and a huge part of my identity. I can't imagine myself without them, and my husband loves how they look on me. My my mother-in-law made a few comments while we were dating, but my husband told her privately to drop it. Three years ago, my husband and I hosted our families for my birthday dinner. It was our first big get together after getting married and everyone was nice enough to bring me a gift. I was going to open them after everyone left, but my mother-in-law handed me an envelope at the dinner table and insisted I open it immediately. Inside was a card and a gift certificate to a local tattoo removal business for $500. I was confused and asked her what this was for. She said that since I was a married woman now and planning to have kids, she assumed I would want my tattoos removed. Both my husband and I were kind of taken aback and stunned. I half-heartedly thanked her and the party continued. Later, my husband called her and told her off. He insisted she take it back and get her money back. She absolutely refused and insisted that I would want it someday. Three years later, her $500 gift certificate is still sitting in my kitchen junk drawer and I've added three more tattoos to the collection. There's been some ideas on what to do with the gift certificate. I actually have a friend who is the director of a restorative justice organization. I asked her if she had any clients with hate symbols that they would like removed and it turns out she works with a guy that has a swastika on his arm that he hides every day because he is so ashamed. This is particularly significant and powerful for me because I'm Jewish. Anyway, I'm dropping off the $500 gift certificate today and I'm really pleased that something that started off as a disrespectful slight from my mother-in-law turned into this. I wonder, in the moment where the mother-in-law was handing the envelope over, did she envision this to play out in a way where the original poster opens the envelope and says, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this. I didn't tell anybody I was gonna get all my tattoos removed, but how did you know? And you spent $500 on it. Thank you, mother-in-law. Did she actually think that that was going to happen or was she just doing that to grind her gears? Pretty sure it's the latter, but what does that solve? Absolutely nothing. I think it's just some sort of weird way way of the mother-in-law expressing her frustration over a situation that she has no control over in a very petty but expensive way.
In the end, like the original poster said, it kind of worked out to be pretty cool because she gets to help somebody in a situation where they desperately want to get a terrible tattoo removed. So it's a win. I was going to say win-win, but there's really only one win here, and the win goes to the guy who gets the gift certificate at the end of this. I think a lot of people wouldn't have had the patience to just say, thanks, mother-in-law, for this prize, and probably would have freaked out right then and there at the table. But let me know what you would have done. Would you have remained calm in that moment, or would you have freaked out? Let me know down below. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.